what we are currently doing is enacting this approach, and I'm proud to have this visit here in Canada. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint Jean. Okay, Mr. Speaker, at the rate things are going, there are likely to be over 30,000 irregular entries at Roxham Road in 2022. Desperate people exploited by criminal smugglers who often offer them false hope are intercepted by the police before they can make an asylum claim. From a strictly humanitarian point of view, this situation cannot continue. However, that is precisely what the government wants to do. Make it last, Mr. Speaker. Will the Prime Minister take advantage of the visit of the U.S. Secretary of State to discuss the suspension once and for all of the Safe Third Country Agreement? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, listen. Our asylum system needs to be robust and humane. There is no magical panacea to all this. Asking that Roxham Road be closed or the Safe Third Country Agreement be suspended is not the solution. What we are doing is modernising this agreement, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, in the Châtel, there are many food banks. There are shared fridges, three places where people can get food assistance. And in those areas, like elsewhere in Canada, there has been a significant increase in needs over the past few weeks and months. We learned today that 1.5 million Canadians, just last month, called upon food assistance. Mr. Speaker, it is not a luxury to eat, especially here in Canada. We need to have the means to do so. Can the government at least give good news to Canadians, ensuring that there is no increase in taxes in the next months and years? The Honourable Minister for Families. Mr. Speaker, once again, it is difficult to, to believe that the Conservatives are truly here for Canadians. Every time we implement something to help Canadians, those who need help, they vote against. So today they have a golden opportunity to support dental and rental assistance. Will they agree with us and support these measures? We hope that we will be able to count on them today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Canadians hope that they can count on this government to not increase taxes. That is what we're asking of them, Mr. Speaker, because people now have to go to food banks in order to feed themselves. In Canada, this is completely logical. The price of vegetables have, has gone up by 12%, fruit 13%, bakery products 15%, cereal products 18%, Pasta, 36%. Expensive spaghetti means a country that's not in good shape. Can the government commit on behalf of all Canadians to not increasing taxes? It's a simple question. Please say yes. The Honourable Parliamentary Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank my colleague for his question. This is an issue that affects all Canadians and... I understand the situation, Mr. Speaker. That is a reason for which, and my colleague knows it full well, he knows it full well. I have spoken to the CEOs, to many large corporations and businesses in Canada, to ask them to do what they can and do their fair share, because in a situation like this, we must all do what we can to reduce prices for consumers. I've asked for the competition office to make sure that there is no disloyal practices here in this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Mr. Speaker, understanding and doing something about it are two entirely different things. Behind this record inflation and rise in interest rates are real people facing a real and harsh reality. They are exhausted, worried and broke. And this Liberal government is intent on piling on even more financial burdens. Mr. Speaker, I asked this question last week, and I'll ask it again. Will this government listen to Canadians and cancel their plan to triple, triple, triple taxes on gas, groceries, and home heating? The Honourable Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We waited 416 days for the member of Regina Capel's climate pamphlet when he was leader. The member for Carleton has now been leader of the Conservative Party for 47 days. And guess what? They still don't have a climate plan. Maybe his new director of communication can help his climate-denying boss to get with the program, Mr. Speaker. 
The Honourable Member for Dorval Lachine La Salle. Mr. Speaker, the cost of living has increased over recent months in Canada. Canadians are having to tighten their belts in order to make ends meet. Can the Minister for Tourism and Associate Minister for Finance tell the House what the government is doing to help Canadians with the rising cost of living? The Honourable Minister. I'd like to thank my colleague for Dorval Lachine La Salle for her question and her excellent work. Inflation in Canada may be showing signs of slowing down, but we understand that the cost of living remains high for Canadians. It is an inflation that is caused by the war in Ukraine, problems with supply chains, and the zero COVID policy in China. That is the reason for which we have acted to introduce uh, and table rather bills C30 and C31. While C30 was adopted, we are now ready to adopt C31. We hope that the Conservatives will support Canadians and vote for C31. Honourable Member for Mayor Mashi Grand Lake. Mr. Speaker, the bill has come and due for the Prime Minister's inflationary spendings, and Canadians got clobbered by another massive rate hike. This is the most expensive government in Canadian history. The Prime Minister has added more to the national debt than every Prime Minister combined. Even his own parliamentary budget officer confirmed that 40% of this deficit is not even related to COVID. Wow. Will the Prime Minister end his inflationary spending today? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Tourism. Facing a rising cost of living, but let's state the facts. Mr. Speaker, every time that we have let lowered taxes for Canadians, the Conservatives have voted against. They vote, how did they vote against the federal minimum wage? Against. How did they vote against cutting taxes for working Canadians? Against. How did they vote against affordable child care for Canadians? Against. How did they vote when we lowered taxes on small businesses? Against. And are they going to vote for or against today? We'll see, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> the Honourable Member for Miramichi Grand Lake. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals didn't have the backs of Canadians. They went behind their backs. $54 million on a ride scam. $237 million for a former Liberal MP for unused ventilators. $150 million for SNC-Lavalin for unused field hospitals. $12 million for Loblaws for new fridges and freezers despite record profits. Yep. Will the Liberals finally end the friends and family programs and give Canadians a break yep. by ending this wasteful yeah. spending? Mr. Speaker, for the past two and a half years, the world has been going through an unprecedented global pandemic. What did this government do throughout that period of time? Supported Canadians. We supported Canadians who lost their jobs, 9 million in fact, with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. We supported businesses who had to close their doors because of public health measures so through the CEBA. Mr. Speaker, you know what else we spent on and supported Canadians with? Vaccines that made sure that we saved lives in Canada, Mr. Speaker. We are not going to apologize. The Honourable Member for South Shore St. Margaret's.